So I want to figure out how many how many stems per hectare there are, and if possible, how, what the species of those stems per hectare are. So how on earth would we go about doing that? Okay, first of all, here's our block again. There's a few things that we happen to know about it, since it is 1 to 5,000. We happen to know that the entire block, all the way together, um, the entire photo has 3.8 million pixels in it. And that translates at 1 to 5,000, that translates into 171,869 square meters. That's just the way it goes. Okay, let's get back here and we're thinking, yeah, okay, we want to trim this thing off and, and take away everything that's not in the block. Because this is the, the orange line is the block, block line. Let's get rid of all this other stuff. Okay, if we do that and we also get rid of the road or we paint it black so it's no longer part of our heritage. Now this chunk down in here is kind of funny because the road goes through and takes out most of that, but there is a, there are a few trees in there. But this is basically what we're dealing with. Okay, so we want to know how many pixels is in this. Well, okay, because we're trying to figure out, we want to differentiate between what's a tree and what's not a tree in pixels. So, okay, let's just grab some. Okay, let's let's go in here and let's select a color range because okay how does this work this is this is a lot of stuff I'm gonna to try to explain here real quick and it's hard to explain things real quick when you're kind of you know it's not a quick thing um, we're grabbing trees we're, gra we're grabbing the RGB range I'm just showing you how this is done I'm not doing it by the numbers okay uh, I'm just doing it um, let me I'm gonna try to Focus in. Now that's okay. Let's let it go. Let's let's run with it. Okay, there we go. What on earth have we got here? We've got pixels. We've got lots of pixels. Okay. Um, anyway, this is our crown closure. All of these, everything inside pixels here is a tree. Everything outside of the pixels is not a tree. Okay. Now it's not technically true. You got some little tiny trees in here that aren't getting counted. And then you say, okay, we got lots of trees in here. They're all being counted, but I don't know how, how. We'll get into how we differentiate between what's what in a minute. Okay, so that's our trees. Okay, I'm going to deselect that and get back over here to the to the spreadsheet. <clears throat> okay, the net block area had 1.2 million pixels in it. The tree crowns themselves, uh, I should get into exactly all I will in a minute, and how we decide what's a tree crown and how we measure that, have 563,000 pixels in it okay that's just something we now know which means that 46 percent of the area is made up of tree crowns 46 percent crown closure okay in the entire block just by adding up pixels together we got 50, over 54,000 pixels which adds up to uh or no square meters in the block which adds up to 5.45 that's kind of interesting because when they traversed it they got 5.2 net hectares in the block. We got 5.45 just by playing around with pixels, not even really trying to come up with anything else. Okay, so what this means is that the number, how many square meters are there of crown closure? There's this many square meters of trees in the block, okay? This is how many square meters are in the block. This is how many square meters are in, the, <clears throat> are in trees, crowns in the block. Okay, so how do we convert that over here to 293, we got 293 stems per hectare. How do we convert that to 293? Well, it's very simple. We have to figure out what is the size of the average crown of the average tree. How big around is? In this case, it turned out to be 4.5 meters is how wide our crowns are. And that adds, and ends up being 15.85 square meters. We divide that into the total number of square meters in our crown closure, and we get that. Well, we get that first, but this is what happens when we divide it into, into the 5.45. 293. We've got 293 stems per hectare. Oh, and dead trees are counted separately. Uh, let me see how I do that. I just count the dead trees. Uh, I don't bother to, to, to get pixels on that. I can count them. I can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And anyway, all in all, in that block, I counted 20 dead trees. That comes up to 3.7 dead trees per hectare. That could be added to the 293. I haven't done that here. But I don't need to figure out, okay, how do we know there's 4.5 uh, or the 15.85 square meters in a tree? Okay, this takes some work. So we'll go back here and we'll look at our block. We can see our trees. We know this is 1 to 5,000. So let's say that we grab some trees and try to grab individual trees. Let's just see how big they are. 
okay on this one right here we got oh my what is that okay uh, that is what I call 0.0912 so that's about six or seven meters or something like that the computer will figure this out we grab that as our tree crown we go over here <clears throat> and we grab try to get all different sizes of tree crowns there's one that's 0.0588 and the computer will figure that out okay here's another one it's whatever here's an odd shape and this is almost for sure two trees <clears throat> and then we got in places we're gonna have very small trees this is this is probably going to be two trees right here Either that or it's one tree that's forked down, mm, that's uh, forked very low. Okay, and then we've got another tree here. Mm, anyway, we, we do lots of these. You do as many as you possibly can reasonably do. Try and make sure you get all different sizes. This is to be two trees, probably three trees in here, so we'll let that alone. I try to get it to where I'm grabbing, but I'm pretty darn sure that I'm grabbing just one tree. Like this is probably just one tree. Okay. This one right here is much, much smaller. One tree. You can grab these, and I'm not even bothered to give you the, their numbers because the computer calculates all that anyway. Here's a tree. Okay. And occasionally you get a great big tree. Uh, this is actually one tree. Big one, but I like that. So these are the size of the crowns. Some of this outer stuff will never be pick, pick, picked up as pixels per hectare because it's going to be too much in the shade. But the stuff that is going to be picked up is, is all of this. This is two trees. Okay, we get different um, different tree sizes. We try to I try to make sure that I get it. Oh, and also I walk through the block, and I'm about two meters high, so I look and say, okay, how many of me sideways would be in the crown of the tree? And the crown of the tree is the upper third. We don't look at anything in the lower part because it's not going to show up in pixels. Sometimes spruce can be huge down below. You know, ten meters of branches going out in one direction. It's never seen. It's all just part of the forest floor. And, and I could show a lot of photos on how that works and how that how that makes sense in the real world. But um, I'm not going to bother to do that. We're just going to stick with the upper third of the tree, the basic crown that's going to be shown up as pixels on the photo. Okay, so we did that. And we we, we did that. We did that. How many trees? Okay, six, 16 trees. Okay, averaged out at uh, um, total, total average crown diameter 4.49. Okay, that is really good. 4.49 is really good because I, I estimate when I just walk through there, it's about 4.5. So 4.49 is just about perfect. It averages out to 4.5. It averages out to this number right here. <clears throat> okay, that's how we get stems per hectare. I know I'm going through this really fast, but uh, you know we, we don't want to take all day here. So what about what about species? What about species? Think about this a second. We've got the we've got our block here. I mean, you know, there it is. How are we going to tell what's a species? Okay, I'll just say that <clears throat> Douglas is mostly Douglas fir. Douglas fir, hemlock, a little bit of cedar. Okay, and Douglas fir has an RGB, red, green, blue. Each pixel has a red, green, blue number. So the average, um, well, we can't really average it, but you take a range of pixels that are indicative of Douglas fir. And it's a big range, okay? You take a range of pixels that's indicative of Western Hemlock, and it's a different range. There is some overlap, that's true. That complicates things, but that's the way it is. Cedar's lighter green. It'll also have its own range, even though there, nothing really showed up here of consequence. <clears throat> with cedar, and I didn't, I didn't take much time to play around with it. But I did with the Hemlock, and I did with the fur. Okay, so when we do color separations, well, the computer's going to grab all the pixels that seem to be indicative of... Douglas fir, and those that are indicative of hemlock. Okay, and anything that's indicative of neither one of them is a very good chance it might be a cedar. And then I'm going to put a false coloration in on it. Okay, here's what I did. Anything that's indicative of Douglas fir, I falsely hewed it toward the red side of things. And anything that's indicative of western hemlock, I skewed it toward the yellow. And, 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 and tan generally shows up as, as hemlock. And, of course, there's the inner inner there's pixels that add up to a little bit of both and those are quite hard to deal with oh and i don't want any dead trees so we didn't it didn't grab any dead trees i don't think nope it didn't so anyway we have pixels indicative of fur indicative of uh, western hemlock and what on earth did that give us that gave us 395,000 fur pixels 175,000 hemlock pixels and only 16,000 cedar which comes that it means that 67% of the block is fir as far as the tree count. That's 197. 
stems per hectare of fir, 88 stems per hectare of hemlock, 8 stems per hectare of cedar, which is false. I know the cedar is three times more than that, but they just aren't seen because they're growing underneath everything. They're growing underneath, and even a lot of the hemlock is is not seen, except that I, I, I worked so hard to try to get the pixels to extrapolate for it. If anything, I think this number's too high. <laughs> But anyway, you also can't look at it this way and say, okay, that means that 67% of our volume is fir. And 29% of our volume or 30% of our volume is hemlock. That's not the way it works. These fir trees are way bigger, way more volume to them than the hemlock. So instead of this being 67%, it's going to be it's going to be over 80%. Well, let's just look at that right now. Okay, um, uh, where can I do that? Let's look at the summary. Okay, the summary has us right here, 197 on the stem count for fir. But you look over here, even though that's only about 66% of the total trees, if we look over here, we'll find out 797 is the net out of 982. So yeah, it's well over 80% of, of the total volume is in fir. <clears throat> and most of the rest of it's in hemlock. And there's a little bit more. This is a bad number for cedar because there's more cedar in there than that. But anyway, this is the best we can do. And you might ask the question, how on earth did I come up with all these grades all this separation into diameter classes, because I say we had 190, the pixels said we had 197 um, stems of fur per hectare. It didn't separate into diameter classes. Mm, this somehow did. Where did I get these numbers? That's from on the ground field plot reconnaissance. This is very important. So by putting in plots in the field where I do divide the trees into stems, per, into, into diameter classes, and of course I grade them, then I just, all I do is I grab here, I grab the species and automatically calculates everything into what's indicative of this area because I've walked through it. Okay, what if I hadn't walked through it? What if I had not walked through this block? All I had done is gotten stems and species per hectare. Now the stems per hectare is really accurate. The species per hectare, hectare is sketchy, as you've seen. And I mean, it has to be because we just don't know. you got trees growing within trees all the time. So it's a sketchy number, but I, in this case, I think it's fairly close. Okay, let's say we had an adjacent stand that wasn't very far away. Same ecosystem association, basically same everything. Certainly the same subzone. Uh, same rough elevation. We have data for it. We could plug that data into here, and then all we need is to look at our photo to give us the the count of fir, cedar, or hemlock, or any of the other species we'd be dealing with, you know, balsam, uh, pine, or whatever, and it'll kick out this number. How accurate is it? Well, I would say uh, not precise enough for what I like. It all depends on what people want. Okay, um, it's definitely a good ballpark figure, a really good ballpark figure. But uh, if we want this to be accurate, we need to actually go into this block, look at our diameter classes, run our own stem counts just to verify that the that the you know that the photo and the pixel and everything worked or, or is reasonably good, and then we can uh, and then we grade the trees. So this the ground game is very very important. Okay. Uh, now, oh, let's see, what do I get back into here? Just back into the block. Uh, what do I want to say here? I'm not going to bother to try to go through on how I come up with stems per hectare by way of 3D stereo pairs because, for one thing, you can't see it in stereo. I can't show you this in stereo. You have to have a stereoscope or, you know, it's just not going to work. Uh, so there's no point. It usually comes in less. I usually get more trees when I do the, the algorithmic pixel count. And the more trees seems to be more at, in keeping with... Um, what we've got, what I get in the plots, and if you really plaster with plots, that's that's really interesting because <clears throat> this came at 982, and I looked at these numbers, and this actually hit within 10% of uh, what we got with plots. So I got, I'm pretty happy when it does that. This hit within 10%. Our plots and are just looking at it from the air came within 10%. Of course, all this stuff was taken from the ground, all that. But still, the, when I separated it into, into stems per hectare and species per hectare, and then added it all up, it was only it was within 10% of just strictly doing it on the ground with lots of, of plots. So, <clears throat> I, there's probably a lot more that people could ask and I could say about that and everything, but uh, that's it. That's all All you can really do with our air game is we can look at it. We can get a great big picture of the whole area so we can see recent dead trees, recent blowdown, avalanches, slides, any changes. We can look at how what kind of shape our our roads happen to be in, uh, you know, at, at the time because everything is current and up to date from our maps. It's error. And so it's, it's really good to have these photos. And then we can separate it into stems per hectare 
and to a degree into species per hectare, to a degree. Now, when we get down, we get, it gets sketchy, and we know nothing beyond that. Oh, people can say, well, you can get, you can figure out heights, and we can. If we got LIDAR, we got some tree heights. Some people said you could reverse the Kozak uh, taper equation and go backwards and get diameters. That, I know, doesn't work. Uh, because you can have trees of the same species growing side by side and they can be the exact, basically the exact same height, say 35 meters, and they can have very different diameters. So I don't see how that's ever going to work, even though I have tried it and I have played with it, and maybe I still will. But anyway, so all we know is we're from the air is looking at the tops of trees, but we can extrapolate quite a bit of information from the tops by looking at it from the top. But let's don't overdo it. Let's not get so excited about, because doing it by way of photography is very, very cheap. <clears throat> okay, and so we don't want to try to pound a square peg into a round hole and try to extrapolate more than we really should from aerial photography. It's really good, but we need the groundwork. And together, working at them both together is when we really get to see things because we get the re we get the comprehensive look of the entire area. Plus, you've got the individual plots. I put in 15. Well, I'll get into that when I get into the ground game. But I put in 15 meter radius. Um, fixed radius plots and there's a really cool way to do that so I'm taking a lot of trees I'm grabbing a lot of trees when I go through the forest we'll get into that when I get into the ground game this is it I think this is all I've got to say I'm not going to get into looking at things in 3d and um, there's another wet method I guess I should mention it where you can <clears throat> have the computer look at all of a bunch of photos and then give you spikes and I don't even have an example of all these spikes and it spikes the trees up in 3d that technology might get serious someday, but right now it's it's too it's so far out that it's not even worth consideration. What we have here actually works, and the degree of the and it works extremely well until you get to species separation, and then it gets it gets a little bit sketchy. But it, it still works amazingly well even for that. But remember that it really works well for the dead trees and the blowdown and all that. Okay, that's it.